How's it going YouTube? It is the Marvelous Collector here and today I have a mystery box from Accords Toys. It is a Marvel mystery box. At the end of this video I'll be discussing a little bit about Shang-Chi that came out in theaters this week. A little bit of a spoiler is uh, going to be in the back so if you haven't seen it yet once I start um, discussing this pop after that I'm going straight into the movie. There may be a couple spoilers there. It's just going to be more of my reaction, my thoughts on it. Um, but some of those thoughts will carry on onto some stuff um, that would spoil the movie for you. So, spoiler alert warning will be given uh, when I do show this pop later in the video. So, heads up on that, guys. Alrighty, guys. So, I did get a Marvel Mystery Box uh, from Accords Toys to the Marvelous Collector from Accords Toys. I also did get some pops uh, that I ordered on uh, Wildest Deal 310. Uh, if y'all haven't seen my video of me opening up some Funkos that I ordered through him, check that out. Uh, it's one of my prior videos. Um, order some. Uh, he has some waffles out there. Um, he also did some uh, auctions. Uh, bought some pops that I've been needing. Uh, some pops I didn't have. Bought them for a great price at auction. He hooked me up. He always does a great job. He loves his fans, and I definitely love buying uh, Funko Pops from him. He's located all the way in California, um, and I'm perfectly fine. He ships it well. Uh, I went through some bumps and bruises, uh, but I have no doubt that it is nicely secure in there. Um, but we'll open that up in the next video. Go ahead and shoot both these videos today, so I'm going to be matching uh, with my stepbrother's Boats and Hoes shirt. One of the best movies ever, by the way. Alrighty guys, so let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Get my K-Bar, I had to go figure out where it was at. So, I did cut a little bit into it just to take the address off, but I do not know what is in here. Uh, he does send me photos of do you have, do you not have, um, and then I just tell him which ones I don't have and he'll randomly put them in a box for me. Um, so I really don't know what they are. Um, and even if I did, it's been so long since I've showed him what I wanted or what I needed. Uh, he goes to toy shows every weekend in Dallas, and he has his own booth, McCord's Toys. Check him out if you're in the Dallas VFW area for sure. Some of you that are following me actually met him, um, and he's been uh, giving out my information for my YouTube. And if you have followed me for that, I do greatly appreciate that. Um, hope you enjoy my content and not just join in just to join. Uh, if you have any negative reviews or any reviews at all, please let me know below. And if you are not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to hit my 1,000. I'm at about 240 now, starting to grow, starting to grow. Almost a quarter of the way there. So let's go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Show your friends, um, those in the Funko community, uh, those in the Marvel community. This is your stuff right here. So, all right, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up, see what's inside. All right, first off, we have a t-shirt. Ooh. All right, so this one looks like a Star Wars t-shirt. My dad is a huge Star Wars fan, and my dad is the owner of McCord's Toys. Um, so let's see. There we go. It's a black light, and this one is the Mandalorian with Grogu, or as you know, uh, Baby Yoda. Um, now, I will let you know, I collect 95% Marvel, and then the other 5% is going to be the Mandalorian. It's a great show. They have great pops. Uh, definitely enjoy it. Uh, my dad was always big into Star Wars. He'd always buy one toy for me and the exact same toy for himself. He would have more bearing, keep it boxed up. Now they're worth a lot of money. Me, I was a kid at the time, tore them open, played with them. So I got to enjoy them, um, playing with them wise, and he gets to enjoy them as a collector. So that's partly why I got into collecting uh, growing up. Visiting him in Dallas in the summers, I'd get to see all his cool collections that he had hung up. And it got me into the collecting uh, genre. So let's go ahead and see. The package pretty good. We got something bubble wrapped right here. More bubble wrap fell. Let's see what this is. All right. So this is cool. So this is the McCords right here. That's my dad right here. Me, uh, my cousin DJ, my cousin Blake, and my uncle Danny. Um, I had two people pass away close to me uh, within the last couple weeks. Um, so I haven't posted that much because I've had a lot going on. Um, but my cousin Blake right here, he unfortunately passed um, at the young age of 29. Um, so it was pretty sad. Uh, 
uh, there's not many of us. Uh, as you can see, there's five of us. Um, and so there's one less of us now. Definitely cut deep. Uh, he was a good guy. So um, I miss, miss him greatly. And uh, I did have a close friend of mine pass as well. Um, back to back, I, both, I went to both their funerals within the same week. It was kind of kind of a bad week for me. So I do apologize for no content lately, but there are personal reasons. Um, but it was, it was tough. Um, but hopefully he's in a better place and enjoying life. All right, next up, I've got another t-shirt. And this one looks like an old school Spider-Man. Uh, it's kind of graffiti wise so you got the spider-man and uh, his logo right there and then you can see him right here so this one's pretty cool i'm definitely going to wear this out it's a little bit harder to see what's going on with it it's more of a uh southern um california socal type graffiti style so i like this i want to definitely going to hang this one up it, this one means a lot so it's a nice little plaque and I, I do appreciate it. So, um, I'm gonna put that somewhere safe and then hang it up. Okay, so next up we're getting into the pots. Let's go ahead and start. All right, so this one is Gambit. All right, this one's a Hot Topic exclusive. Uh, so this is X-Men Gambit. Now he's holding a cat, not too, keen on what the cat is um but that looks like it is the chase with the cat and this one is a hot topic exclusive i don't have this one 904 and i do have a lot of x-men all together and it looks like my x-men's go up to 423 so this was a newer one most likely uh so definitely cool definitely added to my collection sometimes uh he gets me pops and then i see pops out there and i don't know what he gets me because it's truly a mystery i don't know he didn't give me a roster of what he's hit me um and then sometimes i actually buy them and then when i do the unboxing like crap i actually bought two or two or three of these at my local GameStop, hot topic whatever it need be um so the next one is okay so this one is guardians of the galaxy oh wow this one's nice so this one is the halloween comic fest from october 2018 uh, PX exclusive limited to 20,000. This one's pretty cool. I don't have too many Star Lords uh, for sure. I got Rocket Raccoon. I don't even think I have a Star Lord to be honest with you. So this one's pretty cool. I do have, yeah, I do have a Halloween Comic Fest from uh, 2017, which is an X Men one, which was Emma Frost. Uh, and that was a PX exclusive back when they had the tiny little uh, PX sticker. Uh, let me see if I can show y'all. Can't pull that one. She's underneath like three of my Deadpool Pops. But it's back when they had this PX exclusive uh, sticker. So the smaller one. Honestly, kind of like this one a little bit better. It's smaller, uh, less cover area. Sometimes they block the cool stuff. Uh, but this one looks like he's in a suit. And looks like he's a patrol. That one's pretty cool. And it looks like he also has a Rocket Raccoon version. Uh, this one's $3.95 and my Rocket Raccoon is actually $48. I'm going to put that with my... That one's cool. I do like it. The box isn't in too good of a shape. But sometimes he buys these at vendors and I don't care about the box. Um, I've already told him. Um, I'm out of box collector most of the time. So when it comes to boxes, I'm not too keen on it. Um, that being said, I do know that these are damaged. Uh, when he shows me them, he tells me which ones are damaged, which ones aren't. Um, and then I make the choice, do I want it or do I not? Uh, it's different when I buy from a vendor. And you'll see I've got a Walgreens. It's my first time ever buying one from Walgreens, but I found the Blade one online. It sold quick. I finally got it because I've been looking everywhere for it. And some for some reason, they're in-store only. So, um, Or not in-store, online only. So I wasn't able to get him. So I'll be able to do a vendor unboxing. I'm actually going to do that next video with the 310 um, Wild Distills uh, unboxing. But we'll get in that next video. Next pop. Oh. So this one is Year of the Shield. This one is Amazon exclusive for the Red Guardian. Um, where are my other Year of the Shields? Might have already put them up. 
but I did get the uh, two Year of the Shields from uh, Marvel Collector Core. I don't think I did a video of those, actually. I think I just opened them uh, and then saw them because uh, the things with the Marvel Collector Core, I felt like back in the day they had random stuff in there, and then now it's just like everyone gets the same thing. There's no chance of a chase. There's no chance of anything unique, so it's really just like somebody posted it online already. By the time I post it online, there's like 500. Um, so I typically don't do those. But this one is the Amazon exclusive Red Guardian. This movie was great, by the way. I did like uh, the Black Widow movie. Um, next up, we've got... Okay, well, this is What If with uh, T'Challa. Uh, this was the second episode. The third episode uh, was last week uh, with Doctor Strange or Supreme. Um, and then this next week, I think it's the zombies one, and that should be tomorrow. Today's Tuesday, uh, so it comes out tomorrow, and I think it's the what if with the zombies. That one looks pretty cool. Uh, zombie cabin, zo zombie Iron Man. Uh, so this one was the T'Challa uh, Star-Lord. This one is cool. It was the last time Chadwick Bo uh, Boseman um, did anything for Marvel before his passing. Now, he's in a couple more episodes, so we will see him later in the season. Um, as himself as the voice actor. So I've got Captain Carter, um, and then I get uh, two for Marvel Collector Core. So this is definitely adding to it. Um, I'm definitely going to have a small space for the What If Pots. And I honestly don't have any Loki Pots. Um, I need to get those. Let me know uh, where those are at. I don't know if they had store exclusives. I think they did. I just haven't seen any. We've been kind of... I think everything with COVID and everything, the shipping's been crazy. All the stores I go to, there's nothing new there. So... All right, next one. This one is T'Challa, Star-Lord. Uh, this one is the normal one. I don't think I have him. I did buy a few, but I don't have him. Yeah, so I don't have him. Um, he's just the normal uh, T'Challa. I think I couldn't find him. Uh, Sup Sorcerer Supreme. There are a few common ones I couldn't find. I found the GameStop Captain Carter and the non-GameStop Captain Carter. Uh, but they really didn't have much, and that's what brings me back to what I was just saying, uh, where a lot of my stores, they have old inventory. They don't have anything new. Uh, so I've had to order them online or just try to find them later. Uh, the thing that sucks about that is I can buy it for retail or I can buy it at extended prices. That's the downside to not having good inventory. Alrighty, so that was the McCord's Toys unboxing. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I got seven pops out of it. Um, two t-shirts and an awesome placard with my family on it. So greatly appreciate that, dad. I love you. Um, means a lot. That placard caught me off guard. That means a lot for me. Um, and I love you and I appreciate everything you do. Um, and then with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do my Shang-Chi spoiler alert. So spoiler alert right here. Ding, 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 ding. Um, first thing, since I've got this in my hand, awesome character, by the way, uh, he had some really badass fight scenes. He's kind of a dick. Uh, never spoke a word. Never had a line. What sucked is I, this character, I think, had great potential in the uh, future episodes or movies. I'm saying episodes because I'm so used to Disney Plus now. But he got killed off. He got killed off quick. So that's a spoiler. Um, so behind this dragon wall, there's a bunch of soul-sucking dragons. Uh, pretty much that just sucked souls out of people's bodies. Um, he was actually the first to go um, when they were fighting each other. Um, Shang Chi's dad, uh, who's the owner of the Ten Rings that was thousands of years old, um, they pressed on to fight. Um, uh, his mom's village uh, that has all the dragons and mystical creatures. And there's only like. It's really hard to find. So they finally get there. They're battling each other. And then all of a sudden, uh, Shang-Chi's dad's just beating down that wall because he thinks his wife, who had passed, um, was behind it because somebody was playing voices and tricks on him because they wanted the demons to come out. Uh, so he's using the Ten Rings. He's pounding on it. The dragons are coming out. Well, the first dragon comes out, and one of the the uh, Asian lady, her name's, uh, I can't remember her name, Aqua, Aquavina is her real name, uh, I think. Yeah, Aquavina. Um, but her character said, we need to work together or we're all going to die. And then they were like, we won't work together. And then all of a sudden, the little dragon picked up the 
this character right here, Death Dealer, and literally dealt him death. I mean, sucked his soul right out, dead, lifeless on the ground. First one to die from it. I was really bummed about this because this character was a badass and he had some great skills and they just killed him off quickly. Um, another thing, it really didn't feel too Marvel related. Um, it's definitely a different genre than Marvel's done. Uh, it's more like a uh, dragon, Bruce Lee type film and it had its own type of genre that you don't associate really with Marvel. There were a few canids in there. Um, you did have um shoot I'm trying to think of his name i always think it's mordo for some reason um dead you know it and see i don't edit these videos so you don't stare at me think about it for a little bit um but anyway it's man I'm just mind boggled right now i did have his pop actually so dr strange uh, it's his partner. I can't remember the Asian guy's name. Um, anyway, he was in there a few times. He did fight Abomination, um, some other characters uh, that are in the Marvel Universe. So you got a little bit of Marvel uh, tie-in there. And then towards the end of the movie, uh, he opens up the little portal and he says, Are you Shang-Chi? And he's like, Yes. Um, come with me. We have something to discuss. Apparently, those rings, when it they turned um, blue to gold and transferred ownership to him uh there was a beacon that shot off and they don't have any transcripts in their library so maybe it's from an alternate universe that ties into um multiverse of madness we'll have to see um that was right before the ending uh, and then you had two post-credit scenes uh now the last post-credit scene wasn't too much in depth uh it showed her um his sister shang chi taking over the Ten Rings, and she actually made it because it was just men only that could train. She wasn't able to train herself, or train, so she trained herself and became better. She was actually a pretty good fighter, too. Um, but it just showed her saying, all right, let's get this show started. So uh, she was the new owner of the Ten Rings. They had men and women fighting. Pretty cool cutscene. That was the second cutscene. The first cutscene was more Marvel-related. Um, now, they did tie in the, the Mandarin. Uh, so the Mandarin was in this movie, uh, which was the pretend uh, leader of the Ten Rings in the Iron Man series uh, when he became a terrorist, but he's really just acting. So the actor for the Mandarin uh, was actually broken out by the leader of the Ten Rings to be there as punishment. He was actually going to kill him. Uh, and then he put on this phenomenal uh, performance. And now basically he's their jester. So he was in it. Uh, he was in it quite a few times. Uh, he was actually in the battle um, at the uh, uh, mythical uh, land. So he's pretending to be dead the whole time, um, part of his acting. But he was in there, so it was kind of tie-in to Marvel a little bit. You get that little Marvel, haha. Yeah, I remember this from the Marvel show. Uh, so the Mandarin was in it. Um, but the first post credit scene, so there are two post credit scenes. The one was before the credits and one was after the credits. Um, the first one actually tied in. Sorry about that. My phone storage is full. But it ties in. The first uh, post credit scene ties straight into Marvel um, where they're at the Doctor Strange's place. And they are on a conference call with Bruce Banner and Captain Marvel. Now, Bruce Banner, I was kind of bummed out because it's just Bruce Banner himself. Uh, so he isn't the mixture of Hulk and Bruce anymore. I really like that where he had the bronze and the brains. Um, now he's just the brains. So apparently he's taken back over his body completely. Uh, and he's got Hulk uh, repressed in the, in the back. So it's kind of bummed about that, but it showed his hologram. They weren't really there. Uh, and then it showed Captain Marvel uh, there and she was talking to him. Yeah, something that she's never seen either. And she's traveled the universe. So I think those 10 rings are from an alternate universe. Uh, now, I will say they said it was some kind of beacon. Um, and then all of a sudden, after she mentioned that, she got a error code pop up saying that some something huge was happening. Uh, and then she had to cut off and go. Whereas Bruce Banner was like, yeah, she always does that. And that's just the way she does everything. Every time we do our little conference thing. And, and he's like, all right, I'm out. See you later. And then cut that. So um, then went straight to credits. And then the post-credit scene, as I said before, is her taking over the Ten Rings. 
Um, so that was my little breakdown of the movie. I hope y'all have seen it and I hope you enjoyed it. It was a great movie. Don't get me wrong. It was not Marvel feeling, um, but it was definitely a great Marvel movie and I'm excited to see them progress into the MCU. Um, so that'd be cool. Uh, but that will wrap my video from Records Toys and the Shang-Chi movie review. Hope you've seen it. Hope you like it. If you like the video, please like it. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought on the video. I would greatly appreciate it. I love reading y'all guys' comments, your positive reviews. Got any negative reviews, just let me know. My wife had a negative review saying that I don't look directly at the camera, that I look at myself, and it kind of shows a, a difference. So stuff like that plays in the back of my mind. Uh, once I do have an actual lens, be able to look directly at it and look like I'm talking to you. Um, so there are a few negative critiques that I do love because I want to become better. Uh, become better for y'all, better streamer. I should have a uh, intro and outro here pretty soon. They are getting created right now, so I'm excited to see those. Uh, that way I have a little bit of extra oomph in the beginning and end of my video. Um, but please, if you haven't subscribed and you're watching this video and you like it, please subscribe. I do have more content like this on the way. I'm just starting out. I'm going to have some big plans in the future. Please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, and you'll have a marvelous day.